Hi everybody and welcome to putting it all together. Let's begin. From the previous modules, you have learned that uh, quite a lot of things go on behind the scenes when you request a web page in your browser. To summarize, when you request a website, your computer needs to know the server's IP address it needs to talk to. For this, it uses DNS. Your computer then talks to the web server using a special set of commands called the HTTP protocol. The web server then returns HTML, JavaScript, CSS, images, etc., which your browser then uses to correctly format and display the website to you. There are also a few other components that help the um, web run more efficiently and provide extra features. Okay, and we have uh, nothing uh, here that we need to answer, so we can just uh, click on complete it and move on to the next uh, task, which is other components. Load balancers. When a website's traffic starts getting quite large or is running an application that needs to have high availability, one web server might no longer do the job. Load balancers provide two main features, ensuring high traffic websites can handle the load and providing a failover if a server becomes unresponsive. When you request a website, a website with a load balancer, the load balancer will receive your request first and then forward it to one of the multiple servers behind it. The load balancer uses different algorithms to help it decide which server is best to deal with the request. A couple of examples of these algorithms are round robin, which sends it to each server in turn, or weighted, which checks how many requests uh, a server is currently dealing with and sends it to the least busy server. Uh, load balancers also perform periodic checks with each server to ensure they're running correctly. This is called a health check. If a server, a server doesn't respond uh, appropriately or doesn't respond, the load balancer will stop sending traffic until it responds appropriately again. CDN or Content Delivery Networks A CDN can be an excellent resource for cutting down traffic to a busy website. It allows you to host static files from your website such as JavaScript, CSS, images, videos and host them across thousands of servers all over the world. When a user requests one of the hosted files, the CDN works out where the nearest server is physically located and sends the request there instead of potentially the other side of the world. Databases. Often websites will need a way of storing information for their users. Web servers can communicate with databases uh, to store and recall data from them. Databases can range from just a simple plain, uh, simple plain text file up to complex clusters of multiple servers providing speed and resilience. Uh, you'll come across some common databases. MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL, uh, MongoDB, uh, GraphQL, Postgres, and more. Each has its specific features. Web Application Firewall A web application firewall sits between your web request and the web server. Its primary purpose is to protect the web server from hacking or denial of service attacks. It analyzes the web request for common attack techniques, whether the request is from a real browser rather than a bot. It also checks if an excessive amount of um, web requests are being sent by utilizing something called RAID limiting, which will only allow a certain amount of requests from an IP per second. If a request is uh, deemed a potential attack, it will be dropped and never sent to the web server. Okay, and now let's answer the questions. So, what can be used to host static files and speed up a client's visit to a website? And that will be CDN. Okay, what does a load balancer perform to make sure a host is, host is uh, still alive? Uh, and that will be health check. Okay, and now what can be used to help against the hacking of a website? And that will be web application firewall, or we can just use the uh, initials, so WAF. And there you go. And now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is how web servers work.
What is a web server? A web server is a software that listens for incoming connections and then utilizes the HTTP protocol to deliver web content to its clients. The most common web server software you'll come across is Apache, Nginx, IIS, which stands for Internet Information Services, and Node.js. A web server delivers files from what's called its root directory, which is defined in the software settings. For example, Nginx and Apache share the same default location of uh, what we see here uh, in uh, Linux operating systems. And IIS uses what we see here uh, for the Windows operating systems. So for example, if you request uh, requested uh, the file that we see right here, it will send the file uh, from its local uh, hard drive. Okay, virtual hosts. Web servers can host multiple websites with different domain names. To achieve uh, this, they, they use virtual hosts. The web server software checks the host name being requested from the HTTP headers and matches that against its virtual host. Virtual hosts are just text-based uh, configuration files. Uh, if it finds a match, the correct, the correct website will be provided. If no match is found, the default website will be provided instead. Virtual hosts can have their root directory mapped to different locations on the hard drive. For example, one.com being mapped to what we see right here and uh, two.com being mapped to what we see here. There's no limit to the number of different websites you can host on a web server. Okay. Uh, static versus dynamic content. Uh, static content, as the name suggests, uh, is content that never changes. Common examples of these of this are uh, pictures, JavaScript, CSS, etc., etc., but can also include HTML that never changes. Furthermore, there uh, these are files that are directly served from the web server with no changes made to them. Dynamic content, on the other hand, is content that could change with different requests. Uh, take for example a blog. On the, home, on the home page of the blog, it will show you the latest entries. If a new entry is created, uh, the home page is then updated with the latest entry. Or a second example might be a search page uh, on a blog. Depending on what word uh, you search, different results will be displayed. These changes to what you end up seeing are done in what is called the backend with the use of programming and scripting languages. It's called the backend because what is being done is all done behind the scenes. You can't view the website's HTML source and see what's happening in the backend, while the HTML is the result of processing from the backend. Everything you see in your browser is called the frontend scripting and backend languages. There's no much of a limit to what a backend language can achieve, and these are what make a website interactive to the user. Some examples of these languages, in no particular order, are PHP, Python, Ruby, Node.js, Perl, and many more. These languages can uh, interact with databases called external services, process data from the user, and so much more. A very basic PHP example of this would be if you requested the website that we see right here. Uh, if index.php was built like this, what we see right here, it would, it would output the following to the client, what we see right here. Uh, you'll notice that the client doesn't see any PHP code because it's on the back end. This interactivity opens up a lot more security issues for web applications that haven't been created securely, as you'll learn in further modules. Uh, and now let's answer the questions. What does web server software use to host multiple sites? And that will be virtual hosts. Okay, so let's type that in. There you go. What is the name for the type of content, uh, content that can change? And that will be dynamic. And does the client see the backend code? And that will be nay. Okay, like this. And we submit. And now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is uh, just a quiz. Okay, let's see. Click the view side button on the right. Using everything you've learned from the other modules, 
uh, drag and drop the tiles into the correct order of how a request to a website works to reveal the flag. When placing a tile in the correct position, it will highlight in green. When a tile is in the wrong spot, it will highlight in red. Make sure not to refresh the page as it will reset the tiles all to blank again. Okay, so let's give that a try. Uh, okay, let's see. Mm, okay, so the first one uh, is going to be um, requesttryhackme.com in your browser. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. The next one is going to be check check local cache for IP address. Uh, let's see, let's see. Next one is going to be check your recursive DNS server for address. Uh, okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Next is going to be query root server to find uh, authoritative DNS server. Okay, so far so good. Um, then is the next one is going to be authoritative DNS server uh, advises the IP address for the website. All right. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Next one will be uh, request passes through a web application firewall. And then we have uh, request passes through a load balancer. Okay, okay, four more. Let's see. Uh, okay, then we have connect to web server on port 80 or, or uh, 443. Then we have web server uh, receives the uh, get requests, and then we have uh, web application to a uh, web application talks to database, and then the last one is your browser renders the HTML into a viewable website, and there you go. And here is our flag, so let's copy that. Click on OK, close this paste it right here, submit, and we are done with this room. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me. Okay, everybody, talk to you next time.